All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install this manly stroker crankshaft. And I'm going to take measurements using the bore gauge and compare it to plastic gauge and see if plastic gauge is even worth doing. Here's our engine block. It's already got the main bearings installed, the main caps torqued down. And now I'm going to set up my bore gauge. Um, so we have a reading of 2.6572 on the journal diameter so i'm going to set this micrometer up to 2.6570 and then i'm going to zero out this gauge on here uh, and then once i get a reading uh, i can either plus or minus it from 2.6570 so now i just got to zero this out make sure it's zeroed out Okay, now that the gauge is zeroed out, I can uh, put this into the bearings and get a reading. Uh, it is going to leave a little mark on these bearings. Uh, don't worry about it. It's not going to be detrimental to the function of it. And I'm only going to be able to get probably the first two or three. should be able to get the first three. Uh, and then I'll have to pull the engine off to get the back two uh, readings. So... Okay, so I was able to get the bore gauge all the way down through there. Um, they do make a 90 degree one to where you can come in here and you can you can get the measurements like that. But this is this is the way I use it. And the measurements were 2.6550 and sub, uh, subtract the size of the outer diameter of the crankshaft. And that gives us uh, two, a little over two thousandths clearance between the uh, the crank and the bearing. So a good rule of thumb is about a, a thousandth of an inch per uh, inch of diameter. So we're at a little over two inches in diameter in our main bearing or our main journals. So uh, that puts us right in there. And now I'm going to remove the main caps and put our crankshaft in there and we'll try the plastic gauge, see what that gives us. And now I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Royal Purple Max Tough assembly lube on the upper bearings. Okay, make sure your bearings are you know, still all the way down in there, leveled out, and then we can put our crankshaft inside. All right, with our crank in there, uh, when I set it in there, I don't like to spin it. I don't like to do any of that stuff until I have all the main caps snugged down. Uh, and my thought with that is that I don't want anything to happen with the bearings. I don't want the bearings to spin a little bit. Uh, it's probably not likely that it's going to happen, but I still don't like to do it. So now that the crank is in there, try not to, to turn it or anything to spin it. Uh, until all of your main caps are, are back on and uh, snug down. Now as the main caps go back on, I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on here. Okay, so now we got our main caps uh, snug down. Now we can see if the crank rotates. And this one moves nice and smooth. If your crankshaft does not rotate right now, you may not have the correct bearings. You may have non-narrowed bearings. Uh, for this crankshaft, I know that it needs narrowed bearings because of the chamfer on the in the fillet area uh, of these things. So you always want to stop and make sure that it it's uh, it spins freely. Okay, now that we have our crankshaft in there, we're going to put our woodruff key in. Uh, this came; it was wrapped around the crankshaft. Uh, it's pretty easy to go in. Uh, all you're going to do is you're going to take that uh, the, the belly side and you're going to put it down in the hole there and just tap it in with a hammer. Okay, so before I move on, I'm going to pull one of these main caps out. And I'm going to use plastic gauge and see how close the plastic gauge uh, is to our actual measurements. 
Okay, so here's uh, some Plasti Gauge. This is sealed power, uh, part number SPGR-1. Uh, comes with different uh, different colors. So the green is to measure from 0.025 to 0.76 millimeter, uh, which on the other side is going to give you inch, which is what we're going to use. So this measures from one thousandths to three thousandths. And uh, from our measuring already, we're a little over two thousandths, so we're going to use the green. The red is for two thousandths to six thousandths, so we don't need that. We're going to use the green. Okay, so there's a, basically like a little piece of dental floss looking thing that goes through here. And we're going to cut off a piece uh, to go uh, lengthwise this direction, just enough to go on our, on our journal of our crankshaft. And when you cut it off, you want to cut off one of these sections of, of green. That's going to be what you compare uh, your plastic gauge to. So however much it squishes, uh, that's going to give you, uh, that's going to tell you how much it, the clearance is. And once you have your strip cut, you open it up and there's a little thin little piece of dental floss looking stuff in there. You take that, lay it across your crankshaft. This is right on the top, not sure if it's going to show up or not, but it's right here going this direction. Now put our main cap back on. Now I'm going to torque, torque all the bolts down. Uh, starting with the outer ones to 25, uh, start from the inside, work our way out, and then I'm going to do the inner ones to 25, uh, inside out, and then the inner ones up to 60. So outside ones go to 25, the inside ones go to 60 again. Okay, we got uh, the main caps are all tight down, they're torqued down. Um, so uh, I wasn't concerned about wedging it forward or anything right now because uh, uh, this crankshaft is going to come back out. But when we put it in for the final time, it will be wedged forward uh, to make sure that we set our uh, thrust bearings um, and get our end plan in this thing. But right now we're just putting it in there. We're going to put the rods and pistons in to check clearance because this block's going to have to be clearance since it's a stroker. Um, but... So now everything's torqued down. Don't don't move the crank. Don't spin the crank, and uh, we'll take this uh, main cap back off and see how much it squished our plastic gauge. Okay, so now we take our little piece that we have here, and we're going to see how wide our plastic gauge has been squished. So this first, the little green one, is two thousandths uh, clearance, and if it's the the less it's got the uh, the smaller it'll be okay so comparing them uh the plastic gauge squished to about two thousandths so that's pretty close so with our dial indicator we got a little more than two thousandths clearance uh and with our plastic gauge it's showing about two thousandths clearance so if you don't have the money to to get one of these uh, the plastic gauge is only like 10 bucks and it can give you a little uh, peace of mind just by you know squishing one of these in there to, that way you can get your clearance.